Hello everybody, it's Raina and this is I Like It Hard where I discuss hard copy media. Today it's gonna get real queer in here. I am a queer woman and my life has been full of queer media and I haven't really gone into it that deeply on this channel before and I thought before the month of June is over I wanted to do just that. You might be wondering why I am wearing this hair in this heat, well, obviously I'm a bit of a masochist. Um, now I was actually going to do this video earlier in the day, but this heat that we're having is just pretty brutal. And uh, anyway, I don't think anyone comes to this channel to hear about the weather, so I'm just going to get into this now. Um, oh, where do I start? This really runs a gamut. It really I have selected a lot of different stuff here, um, but. Oh, where should I begin? You know what? I'm going to start with like the newest thing that I'm listing under my favorites right now, which is a... Okay, first of all, I'm limiting this to like TV shows, movies, and books because if I went into music too, this would be a very long list. And as it is, I've got 10 things to discuss here. Anyway, so first things first, it's a graphic novel called Theater of Terror, Revenge of the Queers. And this is a really fun anthology like most anthologies, it is very hit and miss, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, this is great. Um, just, you know, I always love that when you open up a book and you're hit immediately with a, um, an art direction that you love, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, well, it's, uh, there's a lot of different stories in here, all sorts of stuff going on, a lot of different art styles, and, um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there were a few that I was like, meh, but, you know, overall, uh, I believe it's a limited run, um, but you can still get copies of it. They're still out there. This wasn't too much money for me, and I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't catch the boat on this one as soon as it arrived, so, uh, I was a little late to the game, but I was still able to get a copy of it. This is, uh, like I said, very recent, and I loved it. It was good. I'm not saying that every story was a favorite, but if you like horror and you like queer stuff, this is for you. My cats are fighting over here. If you hear a thumpity thump, that's what that is. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Theater Terror, Into the Queers, really a lot of fun. All queer creators, lots of creepy content. So, let's see. Uh, ooh, hmm, where to go next? How about Torch Song Trilogy? This is not one that gets talked about very often. Um, it's one that I grew up watching and when, you know, it, it I feel like it's kind of important in terms of uh, history. Uh, Harvey Firestein wrote the play that's based on and he stars in the movie. It's a film in three different acts that take place over three different time periods and Anne Bancroft's in it and um, what's his face? Uh, uh, Matthew Roderick is in it. And everyone's fantastic and wonderful and it's heartbreaking and hilarious and wow, you know. So if you can find a copy of this, I suggest watching it. Grab a box of Kleenex. It's, it is very bittersweet. There's some terrible things that happen. There's some lovely things that happen. I showed it to a friend of mine recently who had never seen it. I was like, wow, I can't believe I've never seen this. I'm like, yeah, well, there you go. So Torch Song Trilogy, definitely one that shaped my, my little brain. So... Um, let's see. So here's one that's a little like, it's, it's kind of new and old at the same time because of, uh, what happened. So Nightmare on Elm Street 2, which once upon a time was kind of reviled as the worst, uh, the worst Nightmare on Elm Street sequel ever. And, oh, it's such a gay movie when, when people were using that as a negative connotation. Um, well, because of this, we get this documentary. And I don't know if you guys have seen Scream Queen. Um, it's so good. Um, Mark Patton, who starred as Jesse in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, this is his story and what happened to him before and after all the madness that took place with making this. So uh, if, if you've seen Nightmare on Elm Street 2, and you wonder what the hell is going on behind the scenes. Check this out, but it's more than that. It's about so much more than that. I loved this documentary, and uh, which is why I own it. 
Yeah, yeah. You can stream it. I think it's on Shutter, but really good. I, I mean, I love this art too. You know, I I think I I'm sorry about the glare, but I'm trying to like. Um, I think you can. Yeah, Shutter. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I love the art on here. It's the scene where he's dancing. Hold me, baby. Drive me crazy. That's that part. The gay dance in it's so good. But any hi, honey. Hi. My cats want to come and hang out this, this time around. So yeah, uh, Nightmare Two and the the documentary that that came after it. Very good. Very informative. Uh yeah. So um, let's see. Party girl. Party girl. Parker Posey. Party girl. Uh, this is a fun movie about um, the gay club scene in the 90s and libraries. It's got Parker Posey, it's got Guillermo Diaz, um, and it's a lot of fun. My One of my best best friends and I watched this a lot when we were growing up, and the soundtrack, I'm, I, I, I said I wasn't going to get into music, but the soundtrack to this. I think I probably mentioned it on my, my music favorites list. I don't know. It's just such a great album to put on a boogie to. I just can't even... If I'm in a bad mood. You put on... See what I'm doing? Okay. The movie. It's a lot of fun. I think you can stream it. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know how available it is physically, but I have two copies of it because I'm a nut bar. Anyway. Party Girl, Parker Posey, she's just wonderful. I mean, I feel like this is kind of what sent her into the stratosphere. Um, I think this is kind of what, this and like House of Yes, probably. I don't know. But anyway, I'm glad it exists. And even though not too many people I know love this movie, I do. And important people do. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know what that means. Um... Okay, we're getting down to the cream now. Not not that these aren't good, I shouldn't say that. These are all really... I have a lot of queer media, and these are like my my tops. Um, okay, so Jeanette Wonderson is a uh, lesbian writer from England, and she wrote this book called Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. And when I was like six, I saw the film uh, on BBC... Uh, miniseries that they made based on it and it was the first time I ever saw girls kissing and I remember being like oh what's this and I tell you my grandmother came in the room and like stood between me and the television while this was going on but thinking back what's really interesting is that there's all this like horrible like beating and like they're exercise they're, they're like exercising this poor girl thinking she's like possessed by a demon and but that was okay for me to watch. It's kind of funny, right? Anyway, so Jeanette Winterson's one of my absolute favorite writers. I, I've read almost everything she has written. There's only a few that I haven't searched out yet, but um, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit is the first, uh, the first time I was made aware of her. And this movie stuck with me into adulthood to where, and I remember the name of it. And so I searched the book out and I read the book and that was that. And now I just, Whenever I, whenever she's got something new coming out, I'm on it. <sighs> Let's see, Hedwig. Hedwig and the Angry Inch. I have so much Hedwig stuff I could have trotted out for you, including the soundtrack. But um, I, you know, I don't have to go into this too deeply. Hedwig is amazing, and it's to me, it's all metaphor and music and just the whole thing is, it's like a big. It's, it's almost a, a living, breathing art installation, which is funny because it was a play. I actually have the, the head thing here that um, a friend of mine gave me for my birthday. I think it was last year. And I was going to put that, that on for this video, but I put this on for this video because this, this wig, actually, I wore to Pride 2017. And we were there for 17 hours. <laughs> I think it was 16 or 17 hours. And I didn't take this wig off the whole time because I'm nuts. But... Hedwig is just, I, I feel like, it's one of those movies that you either love it or you haven't seen it, and then you see it and you love it. I don't know. 
I haven't shown this to anybody that didn't wasn't like, wow, that was pretty great. So, John Cameron Mitchell and Stephen Trask and everyone involved did something right, you know? So, Hedwig, yeah. Um, all right, so, I only got a few more left, but I love John Waters. Big surprise, right? <laughs> but my favorite, my favorite John Waters movie is Female Trouble. And how cool is this? A friend of mine came across this old big box VHS of Female Trouble. And it's so neat. I watched this the other day, actually. And just to pop it in and get that old feeling, you know, VCR. Shunk. But Female Trouble, um, a lot of people, I guess they, they like, uh, Pink Flamingos more, and, uh, or some of his um, later movies, but no, Female Trouble is my favorite. I could watch this over and over and over again. It's just so ridiculous and so terrible and horrible and everything I love. Um, oh, I have three more, and I'm like, which one do I pick? Because these are all very important to me. I'm going to do this one. So, Six Feet Under. Uh, Six Feet Under... I started watching this when I was in my last year of high school, as it was showing on um, HBO. And it was one of the first times I had ever seen a realistic portrayal of just like a normal gay couple without like super tragedies or like all of those stereotypes and pathos and stuff. And they were also an interracial gay couple, which was also important, especially for 2001. If you've never seen Six Feet Under, this is my favorite show. It's always going to be my favorite show. It does something to me every time that I watch it. It's like free therapy. And I watch it once every three years. And I get something new out of it every time. I think that that is a, there's something to be said for a piece of work that does that to the viewers. And... If you don't know about it, it's about a, a um, it's about a family that runs a funeral home in Los Angeles, and David Fisher, the the um, middle child, is at first a closeted gay man, and it is a point of drama in this season. But the show is oh, it just does so much and. It does have what is considered one of the best endings on um, television history. You can look that up, but don't look it up if you haven't seen it. Don't watch it, because you ruin it for yourself. And you should just watch Six Feet Under. It's only like 63 episodes. It's only 63 hours of your life. Come on, there's got to be some other garbage that, that you can put off watching. And watch this. Yeah, do it. Um, all right, so... Tales of, Tales of the City... Uh, Tales of the Sea is so important to me. I actually wrote an essay once, uh, and it said, if you could live one place, if it was uh, one place fictitious or real in the entire world, where would you live? And I wrote about Barbary Lane, specifically in this first book. I, I love the whole series, you know, it's, there, I think there's nine books at this point, in this series, but this one, I can reread it, and I, I actually just reread it, and it just, there, it lives in my heart. I, w originally, I saw this, which I own them, I own the whole series on VHS and DVD, but originally I saw this on, um, PBS? Oh, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know, I'm not gonna get too much of that, but I fell in love and it was one of the first times I ever watched something on TV that was like, I'm not alone. I'm not a freak. Or even if I am a freak, at least there's other freaks out there like me. Um, it's endlessly accessible. Mona Ramsey, my favorite. She's just, I love her. Even now, even all these years later, I look at her and I'm like, you silly woman. Because now, like, I'm older than her. Which is funny. Funny how that happens, right? You watch these things for such a long time over the course of your life, and then you become older than the characters. But, uh, yeah, Tales of the City, Armistead Maupin in general. I've read... Actually, I haven't read everything by Armistead Maupin. I am on 
the last the the last book I have that the last book he's written that I haven't read I'm reading right now it's called Maybe the Moon and I like it a lot but I actually met him um, a few years ago and he was very cool I wrote him a letter and uh, it was neat yeah so he's a cool guy and he wrote some really really important what are you doing important things in uh, in, uh, in gay culture he actually um, I believe he wrote the first book that ever mentions AIDS in uh, the fourth book in the series called Baby Cakes. So, yeah, these were th this book was written in the 70s, and he had a ringside seat to everything that happened and survived it and lost a lot of people. And, oof, but, all right, so, getting super long, so we're going to wrap it up. Now, this one, it's right behind me. I've heard the mermaids singing. This is a Canadian film, and it's my favorite film. It's actually my favorite film, but it's one of those it's one of those films I won't show a lot of people because I feel like I don't I'm always afraid people aren't going to appreciate it. And so in a weird way, I'm, I don't want to recommend it to you unless you like kind of soft, arty lesbian movies. <laughs> But I absolutely love this film. It's, again, one of those things that I feel like kind of... I saw it as a kid, and kind it kind of adhered itself to my DNA, and the music. Um, just, I love I love the message of it, especially at the end. The, the, gay, the, the gay stuff is... It's almost subtext, I guess. Um, it's not really um, at the forefront, but... Um, I just love this film. But I think the, the subject is just, the message rather, is you need to do what you want to do. Your art, yourself, be who you are, no matter what the other cunts say. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm sorry if I seem a little low energy, it's super hot and I'm wearing this wig, and, but I wanted to do, you know, oh, I wasn't so happy pride, yay, <laughs> before it got to be too late, uh, pride month is almost over, I wanted to say though, if you want to extend your celebration of pride for one more day, my birthday is on July 1st, so you can, there you go, there you go. How's that? <laughs> anyway, this is getting long and silly, but yeah, I wanted to do this before, like I said, got too late, and I hope you enjoyed it. I know that this is not my normal thing on this channel, but you know, a lot of times I'll say in a video, I'm going to do this thing, and then I don't do that thing. Well, I said I was going to do this thing, so now I've done this thing, and it's over. Well, to everybody out there, be safe, be kind, be good to each other.